We are once again just forgoing any sort of professional formal intro for a vlog because I just don't think that's gonna happen anymore. The lighting isn't even good. Like this is already trash and we're gonna roll with it. I am reading Crooked Kingdom. I didn't even do a reading vlog for Six of Crows and honestly, I couldn't tell you why. I don't know why it never occurred to me until after I finished, I was like, I should have been doing a reading vlog on this duology. So instead we're just gonna do one on Crooked Kingdom. I love Six of Crows and I already talked about it in my February reading wrap up video. So you can go and check that out for full thoughts on that. But long story short, I gave it five out of five. I absolutely loved it. And I am really excited for Crooked Kingdom. However, I'm already, I'm only two chapters in and I'm just like, this is boring me. But again, it's only been two chapters. I feel like the beginning of fantasy books for me often tend to be slow, so we'll see. And I know the Shadow and Bone Netflix show comes out next month. So I wanted to have all of these done. I've already read Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows, but I wanted to finish Crooked Kingdom off before that show comes out because even though I don't think like this book is going to take place in that show. I know some of the characters from Six of Crows are in there and I just want to be caught up on the series. Kaz saying that he would crawl for Inej. Stop, these two, these two are just the shining star of this whole book. I'm still kind of bored, but thank God Kaz and Inej are reunited because it's really, really at least getting me through this like lull that it's in right now. Okay, so chapter 13, Nina and Matthias' cute, cute little banter, love their time in the market, but we gotta be honest here. Would Matthias not be the most bland character without Nina? Like, I'm just thinking about that. Like, he would be so boring. No shade, no tea. It's just the truth. Again, I just, I need something to spice this up a bit. I'm still feeling I'm um, a little bored and I'm almost exactly 200 pages in. So not fair and great because Six of Crows, I was into it like right from the start and I'm just not feeling that way with this one. Okay, so I just finished chapter 15 and it really took Matthias talking about him saving a little bull. For me to like him it wasn't that i disliked him but now knowing that he has a soft spot for animals it really it really endeared me to him i don't know if anyone else thought this one reading but when he was talking about how he would have done like a proper courtship with nina first of all i just thought that was cute him talking about that but the minute he said courtship i thought of like 19 kids and counting like the duggars anyone else <laughs> that's all I hear when I hear the word courtship. But anyways, that whole conversation was super cute of him talking about how if this was normal circumstances, how he would try to like woo her and such. And that was just cute. Him and Nina are such opposites and they work well together. Still, like out of the six characters, he's not my absolute favorite, but I do, I am liking him more. We're getting to see more depth behind him, which I like. And I still love Nina. And I love that Zoya and Genya showed up. Love both of them. Okay, now I'm feeling like we're finally really getting somewhere with this. Like we got a cha chapter on Jesper and his history with his mom and dad. So again, we're getting that character backstory. Wyland, now that we know that his mom is alive and his dad is obviously a piece of shit. Like we knew that. But we're getting more on him. We got the whole thing about Matthias and I hope that's how you say his name. If it's wrong, sue me. We got him with the wolf and just kind of talking about his culture, you know, and wherever the fuck he's from. I don't even remember. Just like how he was brought up and like the views and morals that he has are very different, obviously, from like someone like Nina. And we're getting more into Nina with the addiction with the param, which I really like that too. And then Inej is doing the walking on the wire did you not know what that meant the walking on the wire above the silos and i love getting her backstory of her talking about how she learned to do that and then her time with tante helen which you bitch tante helen i'm really liking now that we're getting more of the characters backstories because as like a very character driven reader that's what i want i want more on like what makes these p characters tick and i like that we're getting that Okay, I have to talk about this thing that Lee Bardugo did that I love. So we had three chapters back to back to back of Jesper, Inej, and then Kaz. 
And so we have our three pairs, three different chapters. So Jesper and Matthias, in danger at the end of the chapter. Inej and Nina, in danger at the end of their chapter. <laughs> and Wylan and Kaz, in danger at the end of their chapter. So she just hit you one after another. So now all three pairs are in danger. I just, I really like that setup of back to back to back, danger, danger, danger. I don't know. Oh, I'm actually kind of starting to like Matthias. He's really growing in the ranks here for me. Nina just raised an army of the dead. Badass. Badass. That reminds me of Game of Thrones, the long night battle. I don't know why I immediately thought of that when she raised the dead, but a fun visual. Kaz just bandaged up an edge. My God. Hey, I don't think... I don't think they ever get together, like, romantically, and I hope that they don't. I'm pretty sure that they don't already, but they better not. They're just, like, the best duo, but they don't need that. They don't need that. They are just incredible together, and I love that whole scene flashing back with Kaz with his brother and then Inej telling him about a little bit of her time at the brothel, and oh, it's just so good. I love the two of them together. I think the last book I enjoyed a lot for the plot. Like it was a really cool scenario. This book I'm enjoying more just getting the backstory on the characters more. Like the plot I don't think in this one is as interesting as in the first one. Yes, I'm reading on the floor just so I can bathe in the sunlight like a cat. Ah, uh, let's see. I'm on chapter 29 and so Kaz just went to the dregs and was like, are you really gonna let this dude per... What a dumb name too. Per Haskell, listen to another gang instead of me? What? And then he got beat up, but then he beat the shit out of everyone else. And I was like, snaps and claps for Kaz. And the fact that Inez followed him there, it's just like these two, an iconic fucking duo. And Genya changed Wylan back to his regular appearance. And I just like seeing her again. I love seeing characters from other books then make appearances. And Sturmha Sturmhund, whatever the fuck Nikolai's privateer name is. Iconic. Love to see him again. Because as much as I love Nikolai, Sturmhund was just like a fun character. And I know they're the same thing, but it was just like a fun personality. I could read about Kaz Brecker. One-upping and outsmarting everyone every single day of the week. It is so entertaining. The auction just ended kind of, but Kaz's whole like plan that we didn't even know of coming to light and him just basically throwing all this fan trust on Van Eck, this distrust, I think I said Van Trust, <laughs> this distrust on Van Eck, get out of here. It's so fun to read. I love it as a reader when there are plans underway that you don't know about until they need to come about. Kind of like in Akatar when Reese got the Weaver to come to the war in Wings and Ruin and help them out, but like we don't know about that until we need to be aware about that. I don't like to not know what's going on in books. I don't like to be left in the dark, but there are certain cases like with Kaz's plans where it's more fun that we don't know about everything and it makes it really entertaining to read. Triggered. I mean, is it even a reading vlog if I don't cry <laughs> at least once? I take back every bad thing I said about Matthias. I mean, I don't, but that was actually a very fitting end for his character. I mean, his death was like kind of anticlimactic in a way. Like there wasn't like a big drama surrounding it, but that almost made it like better in this situation that he was killed by like technically one of his brothers, but then he was able to find Nina one last time and she's promising to bury him so that, that way he can go home to his gods. It was just really well done. I'm a big fan of character death and I like the fact that we did lose one of our main characters. And out of all of them, like I think it makes sense that it was Matthias because he had said like how he would die to like protect Nina. And in a way he kind of did. R.I.P. man, R.I.P. Wylan also showing up as dad and like reading, not really reading, which is making him look even stupider. 
you love it. Okay, I'm so close to the end, but I just had to talk about this quick. So they just like all laid flowers on Matthias and now they're talking about what they are gonna do with all their shares. And I wanna say first thing about Nina, the strength in her not only to have overcome the param, but then also when she knows she could with this new power raise Matthias from the dead and like that's all she wants is for him to be alive. And she could do that. I mean, he's not going to be the same, but like she could not revive him, but you know, bring him from the dead. Not really, but kind of. She has the strength to know that she can't do that, that it wouldn't really be him and that's not what he would want. And I can't say that I would have the same kind of strength. Like you would just want to hold on to the barest scrap that you could. And... Nina is just such a bad bitch. Now they're talking about what they're going to do with all their fortunes. And now they have all this money. And Jesper's like, I thought that I would be happier. Or I thought being rich would make everything better. And they're at this point where they all kind of got what they wanted. Kind of. Like Jesper, like they all got their money. They all got what they set out to do. And yet he's. they realize that that's not what's going to make them happy. I've just been thinking about that a lot lately. Like how you could have success, you could have a dream job, you could have this, you could have that. And like that all still could make me unhappy. And then it's like, what do I actually find happiness in? And how can I be content with my life and not always be pushing for like, thinking that like this next thing that I acquire is going to bring me happiness and then be disappointed when it doesn't. And this just kind of rang true to that. <laughs> I thought that the, I thought that the emotional shit was gonna end with Matthias dying, not with Inesh getting reunited with her family. Oh, Inesh deserves the fucking world. I don't think I've ever read a fictional character that I just want better things for more than Inej. She deserves the entire fucking world. First of all, Kaz buying her that ship. Love it. Them holding hands. More payoff in a relationship than I've read in a very long time. Like, oh. Them just holding hands, like, brought me feelings that I didn't even know I could feel just by hands being held. Okay, I just finished it. At first, when I saw that the last chapter was Pekka Rollins, I was like, why the fuck does this man get the last chapter? Why does he get, like, the last word? Not so fast. My girl Inej and Kaz got the last word. I actually loved the way that that ended with him being the last chapter because, one, you see Kaz really getting his revenge, and you think, like, he didn't get the chance, or he had the chance to kill him and he didn't. And you're like, oh, Kaz is a good guy. Like, he let him live. Maybe he is good after all. No, this man is suffering. Kaz has completely gotten into this man's head. And this man is fucking miserable. Like, he hates his life now. He can't do anything. <laughs> Which, that is a better revenge than death. So love that Kaz got that. And then Inej sneaking into his bedroom, slicing open his chest and saying, like, if you ever return, I'll add a second slice. Oh, 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 and she was like, death is not a gift that you have earned yet. This book really turned around for me in like the last 200 pages. It was like slow as fuck, I thought, in the beginning. And I was like, you can't up the ice core break in. But this like was just so much more into the characters of it that I still think like right off the bat, I like Six of Crows more, but... I'm okay I'm gonna digest this and I'll film a wrap-up probably tomorrow so I have time some time to like think about it and obviously you're gonna hear my thoughts my overall thoughts like right now so kick it ahead to future Michaela probably looking a lot better than I do right now all right so it's been a couple of days since I finished Crooked Kingdom and I finally kind of feel like I have my thoughts a bit together I mean as much as they're going to because let's be real they're never gonna be 100 but <laughs> as much as I kind of think I have them together. So Crooked Kingdom, I ended up giving five out of five stars. I will say though, I also gave Six of Crows five out of five. And if I had to choose, I would choose Six of Crows, which I'm actually kind of surprised about. But I think the biggest thing for me is because I did not have the correct expectations of this book going into it. And the first one is very, I feel personally very plot driven and it's like the ice court, you know, like that's this big heist, it's this big breakout and you're leading up to like this big 
this big like moment, you know, where Crooked Kingdom, I was just kind of waiting for the ice court heist to be one-upped. And I was waiting for that for like half of the book. And then I realized I'm like, oh, that's not going to happen in here. And once I kind of adjusted those expectations of waiting for some big like plan, dangerous heist kind of thing to come together. And yes, like the ending, it was a big plan, but I don't know. It didn't feel as like action packed as the ice court. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just my expectations were off. This was much of a more deep dive into the six characters, which I really did love. Like once I realized that that's what we were getting and what I wanted to expect out of it. And that was like around the halfway point. The halfway point is when it really picked up for me. And I ended up really loving it and really loving all these characters. I mean, I already knew coming into this that I was really, really enjoying Inej, Kaz, Jesper, and Nina. Those were kind of the four that I was already like really enjoying. And then I did end up really liking Matthias and Wyland in this. I just really think that the way Lee Bardugo fleshed out these six characters in this and gave them each their own backstory. It was like one sad backstory after another, after another. And I love that because I love emotional turmoil and characters. I know it's bad to wish bad things on your favorite characters, but like each backstory being more sad than the next, I was just like, oh shit. But it made me feel something. It made me feel connected to these characters and it made all of their motivations and actions make sense for me. And that's what I always look for. Inej's though, oh my God, like that just, like everyone's was sad, but Inez's was just like a whole other level. So then to see how her character wrapped out at the end of the book of Kaz buying Inez a boat, I kind of figured that he was going to do something with that. But then to bring her family, oh, I was like ugly crying. I mean, you saw, you kind of saw that. I was, I didn't like capture my ugly crying that much on camera. I kind of captured like the after effects. Out of every character that I've ever read in my life, I think I'm like, if one character deserves all the good in the world, it is Inez. And I'm so glad that she got that. And Kaz too, like, I was just very satisfied with how his character ended and that he got his revenge, but I think more so he is able to let go of the past a bit and some of his anger and hopefully work towards healing. And I like that at the end, Inej wasn't like, I'm going to, she wasn't like, I'm going to heal him. She was like, he needs to do this on his own. And they rely so much on each other without using the other as a crutch if that makes sense and i i just think their duo is unmatched i really like wyland and jesper how they ended out and jesper getting ready to like battle his addiction like you go jesper you do not need to gamble you can channel that into more productive means and i really like that he's getting the chance to do that wyland his dad sucks glad that he got the money <laughs> and there's a car pulling up outside what are you doing okay, let's jump into matthias's death Unpopular opinion here up ahead. I love character death. I love character death. I love when a character dies and I think it just makes the stakes so much higher and I really appreciate when a character death propels a story forward and I think that's what Matthias's death is going to do for Nina and I actually think it like at first I was like he literally just got shot like randomly. I mean not randomly but just shot in the street like after you think that everyone's safe I was like, that's dumb. That's like kind of anticlimactic. But no, it makes total sense of like the way that he goes and then that he was able to make it back to Nina and share a few words and then that she's gonna go and bury him on the ice. And then when he said that the wolves were welcoming him home, stop. It was really, really beautiful. Like he grew as a person so much and his views from being like, a, just like kind of a horrible person if I'm gonna be honest and like a very ignorant person to then just growing and realizing that the way that he was raised was wrong and how he wanted to help other men back in his country to like see the light as well about the Grisha. And I like that he had that mission by the end and granted I'm sad that he's not gonna be able to accomplish that, but I think in turn, Nina is going to, all, like Nina is also changed by him and seeing, the, seeing his people as not evil and how Matthias was like, there are ones that can be changed. Like you changed me, you can do that to other people. And again, I'm like, that sucks on Nina, but that's like kind of put on her. But I do think that it gives her character like a, a new renowned purpose besides just 
getting the Grisha out of Ketterdam. I think I, I would definitely pick this duology over Shadow and Bone. As much as I did really enjoy Shadow and Bone, Six of Crows was just a whole other level for me. And Inej and Kaz just literally can't be top for characters in my book in the Grishaverse. Like, get out. Yeah, I really love doing reading vlogs and I have a couple that are in the works right now. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Some with other fantasy books, some with some romance books and yeah. But overall, five out of five on Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. And that's where we're gonna call it. Yeah.